In our last lesson, we looked at how to achieve soft, blended harmony for strings, woodwind, and brass. In this lesson, we'll see how to achieve the same thing, but in a forte dynamic. Orchestration can't be separated from dynamics, so some of our solutions here will be quite different. Here's another chorale phrase. Here's a first version for strings. You note that the orchestration is no different from the soft string version with double basses. Since strings are quite homogeneous, they blend over their entire range, and there's no particular register we need to favor when they're loud. Here's an alternate version. Although Devise makes the sound thinner and a bit softer, since the first violins are playing in octaves, the main line is still strong enough, and the octave leveling makes the sound more brilliant by adding the higher register. In the winds, things get more complicated. I've orchestrated all the wind versions here for winds by three. Why? Because with winds by three, we can create full chords in each family, making it easier to fill out the harmony in a blended way. Here's a first version. Each line is doubled at the unison within one family. I've also added some octave doubling. The first flute is an octave above the second and third flutes, and the bassoons are doubled an octave lower by the contrabassoon. The high flute adds clarity to the soprano line, and the contrabassoon adds power to the bass line. As we mentioned in our last lesson, octave doublings are one of the simplest ways to make music sound louder. The lines are thick since they're played by multiple instruments, but overall it still sounds stratified, not perfectly blended. We're quite conscious there are several different timbres here. Here's a better solution. Here I've mixed up the families and the lines so that no one family plays only one line. The main melody is in oboe 1 and clarinet 1, doubled by flutes 1 and 2 an octave higher. I've also doubled the middle parts up or down an octave. For example, the original tenor part appears in clarinet 2 in its original register, as well as in oboe 2 an octave higher, and in bassoon 1 an octave lower. These octave transpositions have the effect of making the families often crisscross with each other. For example, bassoon 1 is sometimes higher than clarinet 3. I've made occasional adjustments if a line would go outside the range of the instrument, for example at the end of clarinet 3. This kind of crossing is a good way to fool the ear into perceiving better blend. Another effect of this arrangement is there are no big gaps in register anywhere. Registral gaps would make the whole thing sound less unified. They're more suitable to contrapuntal textures. Here's the last version for woodwinds. This version is even better. Although, like our second version, it fills out the gaps in the texture, here I've not limited myself to always keeping the original part writing in the middle parts. I've used bits of each middle part in a kind of zigzag way, so that, apart from the top and bottom lines, no two instruments have exactly the same parts. Also, a few of the repeated notes have now become held notes. The overall sound is smoother and fuller. This technique, writing secondary lines more freely to avoid too much literal doubling, is very important in scoring orchestral twitties. Of course, this requires solid skills in harmony and part writing, and some experience in counterpoint is helpful as well. Now here's our first version for brass. I've only used the heavy brass. The only change to the original chorale version is that the bass is doubled by the tuba. This is not a bad solution. The first trombone starts a bit on the high side, but it's a loud passage, so that's not a major problem. There are no problems of blend. There are no horns, however. Since the horns are really the alto tenor voices of the brass section, they would have to go in the middle of the texture. But the horns are not as brilliant as trumpet and trombone, so it's not a great idea to simply give them the middle parts. It would soften the overall sound. Here's a better version for brass, now using the whole ensemble.
Here the soprano line in trumpet one is doubled by horn one or octave lower, since this fits perfectly into the best horn register. As in the best wind version, instead of just doubling the original chorale lines at the unison, the inner instruments fill out the middle register with free part writing at different octaves, using bits of the original middle part so the eighth note movement was still present. For example, look at horn three in trumpet three. The trumpet part is the original tenor line, but the horn is an octave lower. It makes the repeated B-flats into a held note, and the last two notes don't follow the trumpet line. Again, this zigzag technique makes the overall texture richer and fuller. Our next lesson will look at how to score a chorale for full orchestra, and how to score various chords for tutti.